the print of the cuff presented by IIFL Wealth and Asset Management corporate partner AU Small Finance Bank in alliance with Jindal Steel and Power Limited airline partner SpiceJet Welcome to the print of the cuff I am Mansi Fadke senior associate editor with the print and in this episode of the four people that you would be seeing on your screens three have been personally vested in the story that we are about to discuss uh one uh, scientist nambi narayan narayan ji uh, who was unfairly dragged into a controversy uh, where he was alleged to be a spy when he was working with isro uh, he was vindicated acquitted by the supreme court after a four year long uh, uh, you know uh, uh, trial in 1998 Uh, then joining me from Delhi is my editor in chief Shekhar Gupta. The reason why he is personally vested in this story is because back in 1995, when he was with the India Today, uh, he was the first uh, journalist to unravel uh, why this whole controversy seemed to have been concocted with the help of his colleagues at India Today. And finally, uh, we have R Madhavan, who has done the service of bringing this story uh, on the big screen through his directorial debut, Rocketry: uh, The Nambi Effect. Uh, welcome sir thank and you. over to you sir uh, shekhar sir <clears throat> well thank you very much uh, for revisiting this story nambi sir if i may ask you uh, first of all we've never met physically uh, but it's a, it's a great privilege to be talking with you and as an indian my gratitude for your strength uh, you know it's very easy to give up in life particularly facing a challenge a challenge like that but you fought for your honor and you won congratulations and you are an inspiration uh, a film being made on this tragedy in your life uh, are you what did you think is it a good idea for a film like this to be made because this reminds you of everything that happened or would you rather leave it behind and move on uh, well i wouldn't like to leave it behind and then forget about it Uh, in fact i would like to keep uh, telling me and reminding me that this is what has happened and this is why i fought for that case and the fight will be over till uh, the concerned people who have fabricated this case are punished appropriately so that way i have no hesitation to say that this movie is one of the very good ideas of bringing you know what it was to the public Uh, review of course my wife and my son both believe that they don't want to relive this once again so they have not yet seen the movie as such so that is their attitude that's it how how true the movie is to your real story i know in, in cinema they will some liberties taken i don't think that they have taken any liberty it is 100% true to the core uh, i don't know maybe since you asked me this question specifically can i, I can say 99% true mm. <laughs> 1% could be some somewhere forgetting some something that kind of a but the idea was to bring the truth to the public uh, view let the public know and then judge whether you know, what kind of situation we are living in that is the idea um Madhavan sir how did you come across this story and uh, why did you pick this uh, for your uh, directorial debut and your first production <coughs> as well right Yes um so the tagline for this film is sometimes a man wronged is a nation wronged and unlike uh, what a lot of people think who have not yet seen the film it's not about Nambi Narayan sir's tragedy at all I wanted to make sure that when I met Nambi sir and I was thinking I'm going to make a story about this case and about the tragedy in his life Uh, I realized that I was missing a larger picture. Just meeting him and understanding and looking at his aura, I realized that there was something more to it. But I was not able to pinpoint what it was. It was only after writing the script for many months that I realized, when I was speaking to him, that he corrected me on one part of the script and said he was in Princeton at that point of time, learning stability theorem under Professor Crocko. And I looked at him astonished, and I really thought that this man is not. is not cohesive right now simply because he's talking about Luigi Crocco who is considered the father of uh, you know the moon mission and he's a NASA's most uh, cherished uh, uh, scientist what does this man have to do with him and that's when he started talking about actually his achievements you know 
be it his uh, being the first Ivy League student in uh, Princeton from India or his uh, adventures in Scotland or the kind of achievement he's managed to do in France mm -hmm. where he took 52 scientists under the pretext of working for them and not knowing French and how they made the Vikas engine out of that. And he was talking like how we make tea at home. He said, oh, by the way, I also made the Vikas engine. And uh, things that he did in Russia and how he had, was instrumental in getting the four engines or cryogenic engines back to India. And that's when I knew that that is what this I was... This is the meat of the This story. is the meat yeah. and this is unfortunate because <laughs> Nambi sir was angry and agitated while I was talking to him because he was saying how wrong the case was and how badly it was and how India did not have the technology that he was being accused of, of selling. And, and it struck me and I said, my God, he says, he's, the, he himself is not talking about his achievements. And so I decided very consciously to make a movie which will change the narrative and make people stop looking at Nabi sir only as somebody involved with the spy case. Right. Because that's not Nabi Narayanan. He got the Padma Bhushan. Nobody knows why. And so I made it a point to make a movie about Nambi Narayan sir's achievement. In fact, the case is by barely eight minutes in the film. Yeah. But the reason it's so impactful right now is because people suddenly realize what we are doing to our scientists and what, how careless we've been about their safety or their appreciation or their acknowledgement. And that's how the film came about. Right, more like a celebration of his achievements. More like yeah. a revelation of his right. achievements. So celebration to abhi karna abhi baki karna baki. I mean, he made, a, he made the only engine in the world that has not failed. The liquid fuel engine, Vikas engine has the distinction of having 52 launches or more and never failed. The missions might have failed, the satellites might have failed, but the engine never failed and nobody knows that. So, and we are the only liquid fuel engine that we have. In fact, the Indian rocketry success story is barely known to the public. Like today we have the highest number, next to America, we have the highest number of uh, weight of solid fuel, uh, engines in the world. And you know, America is barely, sir, how much, how many grams are they ahead of us by? Very small, I don't remember, but we, we are holding 150 tons. Uh -huh. I think they may be having 151 or 50. something like that. So that's the kind of uh, capacity we have and that's why I wanted to make this film. Just to answer your question. Right. Yeah. And uh, Nambi sir, how involved were you in the whole process of uh, filmmaking? Also when uh, you were first approached and you were told that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that I would love to make a film on your life, on your story. Did you have any trepidations about uh, whether you would be fairly represented or whether your story is safe in uh, this person's <laughs> hands? <laughs> well, after talking to Madhavan and after knowing about him through news media, and also his track record and uh, particularly knowing that he is an engineer by himself. So I felt very confident and comfortable. Mm -hmm. See, one reason is whether he is a honest person or not is a secondary question. But the primary question is whether he understood the whole uh, subject for him not to be honest or dishonest, he should know. So I think he understood the whole question mm -hmm. and he also understood the meaning of when he our technology, technology development and stuff like that. And slowly he got dragged into it and then he became passionate about it and then he himself got dedicated to this whole thing. And then he started living like Nambi Narayana. <laughs> so that way it was a very interesting uh, changeover. I think he has done a very good uh, uh, replica of uh, what uh, the whole story is. Now I don't think that anybody can do better than <coughs> Were you involved in the whole process of... Uh, I was associated in discussing with him. We were discussing this story for mm. about uh, approximately a year. Mm. And then uh, he was, uh, you know, digesting it and then coming back, back and forth. <coughs> and once he started writing the real script, the whole thing moved fast. Mm. Very small corrections here and there. So the whole story went well. And you released it in three languages, you shot it in three languages, not just dubbed it. Uh, why is that so? The thing is, um, the film made most sense in English because mm. everybody at Israel spoke English. Uh, everybody at Princeton, France, Scotland, Russia were communicating in English. So it became very difficult for me mm. to make the Russians and French seem like they're speaking Hindi. So we shot the original film in English. Then we shot the film in Hindi where we kept the foreigners speaking the language that is native to them. And the rest of the film was in Hindi. So that was with Shah Rukh. Then we shot the film in Tamil with mm. Surya in it, with this exact same scenario. We've done, I don't think any film has been shot like this before. In fact, there are four or five things that have been never done in any film before that we've done in this one. And so 
but we decided that, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound, yeah, let's do everything that you can. <laughs> for example, there's no prosthetics in this film. Right. We've shown I artists go from uh, t 29 till 79 without any prosthetics. And you yourself would have had to go, go through that process of yes. putting on weight, <laughs> losing weight and doing things to your teeth and what not. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> how was to, that journey like? You know, it was uh, once we all decided that we we're going to tell the story hmm. and that was a story of Nambi sir. It did not become a project anymore. It became a passion. It sort of mm. became a just like the Hindi me junoon in the mm. on our heads. And everybody had a different approach to the project before they met Nambi sir. They would come and talk money and you know dates and everything. And the moment they met Nambi sir, the attitude changed. Mm. They were like, no, no, no. Let's what, what let's see what it takes to get this done. So for me to look, the, I don't know if you've seen the film, but there is a point in the film where I need to look exactly like him. Right. And so there's one thing to do a biopic and another thing to do it in such a manner. That you make it real. Very convincing. Very convincing. Mm. By because he's alive, he's right here. Right. And we've seen him. So I had to look exactly like him. And for that I need to change the bridge of my teeth. Mm. I needed to get my hair dyed, which took me 14 hours a day to mm. get the hair absolutely white like his. And I mean he's got great hair, but it's very <laughs> difficult to get to that. Or to put on weight and lose weight. And the reason we kept all that real is because we didn't want anybody to doubt or take with a pinch of salt, mm. uh, you know, what we are saying just mm. because we look like we're wearing a wig or a, or a, or a beard or mm. a moustache. So, we kept everything as genuine and possible and I don't think it's been done ever before in any form. But this entire process would have taken you a very long time, right? Uh, the, research, the research to get this looks mm. uh, took me about six months. Okay. And then the whole script writing and pre-production was about two and a half years. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, we have uh, Jeffrey Francis, he is one of our subscribers. Uh, his question is to Nambi sir, uh, alongside the fake plot by police and intelligence agencies, uh, do you believe that the whole story was blown up above the proportion by Malayalam, uh, Malayali newspapers? Um, as a 12 year old, I was enthralled by the exclusive cooked up stories of a spy scandal, honey trap, national security, betrayal, etc. So, do you believe that if ISRO leadership at that time had taken a firm stand behind you, all this wouldn't have happened? Yeah, I think so. There, there are two things. One is the Malayalam media uh, blew it out of proportion. That is one thing. But when you say out of proportion, what do you mean by out of proportion? Hmm. Uh, you know, the whole then thing is... Yeah. What was the proportion? Yeah. yeah, so that way, if you really look, they, hmm. they were playing high. Hmm. Uh, all kinds of cock and bull stories they were talking about. So, if I may, if I may interrupt, there was one story that somebody read, said that I was on my scooter driving past his house and I saw him inside uh, burning documents. Whereas all he was doing was boiling his tea or coffee. <laughs> this fellow drove past and he saw some fire and he saw him. Uh, remember that story, sir? And then Malayalam, yeah. press, Malayalam press had got very exercised by this. By yeah, this. I remember that story, but at least there is a fact in it that I was firing something. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, the, but the, yeah, but, uh, but the point, many of them, they have just imagined, for example, they told that I have smuggled documents through the fish basket. I don't understand why one should uh, smuggle the document through fish basket. Uh, is there as if there is no other method by which you can transfer the document. So, they were talking about all kinds of imagination. Each man has a free day. So, they can write whatever they want about those ladies. They wrote all kinds of stories which no uh, honorable civilized person will will write and listen to that is a kind of thing so they wrote uh, things like i have a grown up daughter and uh, i never had a life of this guys what they are talking about in my, at least i never lived or even thought of life, such a life but they wrote all kinds of things now imagine uh, how how one will put up with this so they didn't have any heart or Maybe the first time I saw your article, which was uh, soothing and uh, I think very, <clears throat> very interesting, your, your document. In fact, I was just wondering if this man can understand what is the right thing, what is the wrong thing, why the hell the others are exactly. not able to understand. Exactly. So then I understood the answer also. You never had an axe to grind. <laughs> others have. That is a problem. Well, possibly yes. Uh, so, Madhvan, uh, you, this was a particularly complex uh, thing for you to do. Uh, 
Did you look at the politics of the day before doing this? Uh, if Nambisar had not got his Padma Bhushan and had not been fully embraced by the establishment, would you still do it? He didn't know you. He <clears throat> well, the truth be told, sir, I started the project much before his, uh, uh, his uh, compensation or the Padma Bhushan. I started the film in 2016 uh, and uh, uh, the, the decision to spend money on it and start shooting what was done in 2017. In fact, we were on the floor when he got the Padma Bhushan. I see. I see. Uh, and, uh, and getting into a character, you got into many characters. Uh, give me the top three which have taken the longest leaving you after the project is over. And will this feature among those three? Oh, uh, with, uh, by a uh, big margin. I think uh, Rocketry is the one that I'm going to have the most difficulty getting out of because it was not just me as an actor. Uh, there was me acting and directing at the same time. I, there was me directing myself. There was me directing in three different languages and somebody who has never been on the other side of the camera. I've never held an iPhone shoot in my life or edited it. So. Uh, there are a lot of lessons that I'm desperate to unlearn, you know, there are a lot of characterizations that I'm desperate to get rid of. So this would primarily feature as one of the toughest ones. The rest of the characters that I have done, I haven't, uh, you know, I, I haven't had much difficulty in getting out of them. Be it Rangde Basanti or Sala Kharus or, uh, uh, or even my web series called uh, Decoupled. There, you know, it takes a little bit of a, maybe a month's break and I'm out of it. But this one, I've been living for six years and I'm going to find it very tough to get out of. How is it directing yourself? You know, um, uh, <clears throat> the, there's no rational sense to why I should have done this film in the first place. Mm. So, like I said, we were hurtling with a passion. So, uh, directing myself was, again, I think it, I did it in a state of uh, a semi-trance, you know. I just knew exactly what I wanted and I knew what the others wanted. So, sometimes I made the mistake of being the director mm. in front of the actor instead of being the actor <laughs> because I was looking at how they were performing. Mm. That apart, uh, you know, I, I had, I, I, let me try and explain the complexity of what I'm saying. Mm. So we don't shoot linear. We've been shooting over a period of five months, but we will shoot one bit over here right. in three languages and then jump to it in the next scene after maybe two months. Mm. I had to keep in track of, my, I had to keep track of which language I had left off the emotion in which place. That is complex. So that it becomes, <laughs> the continuity becomes okay. So, uh, that, you know, the growth and the, and, you know, the continuum was very important to keep the right. realism in the film. So that was the toughest part. Uh, we'll take a question from Sanjay Agarwal, yes. MD and CEO of AU Small Finance Bank. Uh, question for you, sir. From Deputy Commandant Preet in Seahawks to Maddie in Rena Hai Tere Dil Mein to now Dr. Nambi Narayanan, how has the journey been like for you in the industry and any character that remains close to your heart and why? Besides uh, Nambi sir's character, because you've just told us about how invested you are in it personally. Right, and I'm I'm sure Nambi sir will correct you before I correct you, but he's not a doctor. Uh, he's. Uh, oh, did I say that? I'm so no, sorry. No, no, he must have. That, that gentleman must oh, have so, misunderstood. Yeah, 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 yeah not then, you. Yeah. So uh, he keeps correcting me. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> doing it. Uh, for me, the, uh, the I think uh, some of the characters that I've played that have been really close to me have been probably Flight Lieutenant uh, uh, Ajay Rathor hmm. from Rangde Basanti. Uh, there's three idiots, Farhan Qureshi, I think. Yes. Uh, it was a character right out of my own life. And then, um, I think uh, from Rana Hayatri Dilmi, uh, Madhav Shastri. Mm. Those are all very close to my real life character mm. in college, school and basically my demyo. All right. And uh, his question to you, Nambi sir, is in your 27 year long battle filled with a lot of vilifications and considering the clogged state of Indian judiciary, how did you manage to keep your spirits intact and did at any point of time, uh, did you feel like giving up? Yeah, honestly at the fag end, you know, it was becoming too many adjournments. Hmm. So also I was running out of my financial uh, help and you know, wherever I could borrow, <laughs> it's all coming to an end. So I thought that this is going to be the last uh, travel to Delhi. Let me make an attempt. And there it goes, it was decided on that day uh, in, in my favor. The most, uh, what you call, the best judgment which I can ever think of. And in fact, I myself argued the case in the court. So that lawyer's money also, I don't have to pay mm. for that. Maybe everybody knows that I, I, since I didn't have the kind of... Uh, so at some point of time, I felt like giving it up. But then I, there was no need, it, it went through. 
then how did i go through the whole thing is because it's a sheer will power you know you you got agitated you got irritated you your dreams were shattered so you can't get out of it that easily mm. so that that is what's driving me up to this end and for such a compelling story uh, i have read in some of your earlier interviews that you were finding it difficult to get a producer and that's how you then decided to go ahead with the uh, production yourself why uh, why would you not be able to find a producer for such a compelling story <clears throat> every producer has a right to safeguard his investment and uh, they have parameters in the industry fortunately or unfortunately that does not give rise to newer films and newer concepts to come in this film was as new a concept as it can get not only was it a biopic it was about a rocket scientist with no songs and no um, you know uh, required commercial elements so people were very hesitant <clears throat> also i didn't want to justify the expenses of the film to anybody if i was going to spend a certain amount of money to show the vikas engine and its firing which has never been shown before in any film before you know you've never seen a rocket engine in any film before in right. the history of cinema so i didn't want to justify why i'm spending that much money on getting the vikas engine to fire correctly mm-hmm. or going to russia or going to shoot in georgia or in any place so uh, i figured that you know i better put my money where my mouth is and not have to answer those questions and since um, my producer my director my writer and actor were the best of friends uh, that was not a problem i have a question from arun bhardwaj who's our subscriber dr uh, nambi sir did you ever find out the motives of the conspirators were any of the conspirators named or punished uh, if not what does what does it say about the rule of law in india the motives of the conspirators could be is my guess is they are working on somebody else's instruction because to the best of my knowledge i didn't have any uh personal quarrels or uh, enmity with <laughs> with anyone so there must be some conspiracy either national or international and uh, they have played played it up so in other words some of our own fellows who have worked uh, with uh, that that kind of a motive this i am not sure about it but I, that is the only explanation which is becoming possible at this juncture and how much damage did it actually cause to the project because we were getting help from the soviets for cryogenics and that that operation was blown isn't it it was closed that contract uh, was to be scrapped but then uh, because of the spy case it ran into doldrums and then finally uh, we were left uh, you know helpless and to add to that is uh, myself discontinuing from the ongoing activity with uh, in fact that appears to be the aim of the conspirators so what happened is finally it all were in in doldrums and there was loss of time uh, time delay I, i would imagine that what was supposed to be completed in 2000 or 2001 uh, we could complete it only by 2014 or uh, 13 something like that so to that extent there was a great uh, delay in the whole project and most importantly what i would add here is the immediate effect of the spy case people got demoralized they were spending their time in the library or borrowing books from the library reports from the library all of a sudden it all got stopped and nobody would stay after 5:30 and nobody would borrow documents to carry home or read it in the bus nothing it's a absolute demoralization because they were all afraid they didn't know what the hell to do so they said why should i risk my character my career this is something which resulted in the delay as well as the after delay the, the, actually it is a very high demoralization which many people i understand i am able to understand because i i am able to see the whole thing i am sure that you will appreciate the observation of mine now this is where the isro lost many things on that yeah so i do remember at that point when i was talking to people higher up in isro dr kasturi rangan told me that how can you be accused of uh, stealing any secrets because isro has no secrets we are an open organization we publish our research we don't classify anything nothing in isro is classified and yet people then got scared they were not taking papers home 
Uh, actually, in relation to this, uh, one of the print journalists, Ananya Bharadwaj, has asked this question. Uh, scientists posted in sensitive departments are vulnerable to traps. Uh, we saw a case in Nagpur investigated by UPSTF in which a scientist with BrahMos Aerospace was arrested under the Official Secrets Act for being in touch with Pakistan's ISI. So, how should scientists, officials posted in these departments be trained to first identify and then report such incidents to higher authorities? Are there any workshops, internal meetings conducted to prepare officials for such possible scenarios? I think. I don't know how to react to this, but let me react to this. It is absurd. You expect somebody to work under constraints like, oh, this if I do this, I'll be having this problem. If I, What nonsense mm. we are talking. This is something wherein you should have the freedom. You should be free from fear. Now, if you are put under fear and stress, <laughs> I think nobody will work for that. See, this is exactly, I'll tell you, in the... Even for that matter, let me put it this way, since you started asking this question, what is Official Secrets Act? Hmm. This Official Secrets Act was created in 1923 yes. by the Europeans for preventing Indians to work on freedom movement and stuff like that. Now, we are still following that. We don't you think there is something wrong in that? So, Definitely. it must be scrapped. Hmm. You should create a meaningful uh, Official Secrets Act or whatever it is. Hmm. So the, you see, instead of correcting the system, we are expecting, this, step, yeah. I mean, they, but this gentleman wants to correct the persons. Hmm. I think that is wrong. You, you should correct the system. Right. Madhvan, uh, now that you have done one a biopic, uh, does it uh, whet your appetite? Are you going to do more? Because my big complaint is that we do too few biopics and the ones that we do, uh, we colorize them so much that uh, they become more fictional than pure fiction. <clears throat> I think the um, the reason to do a biopic has to be uh, uh, very clear, sir. My association with Nambi, sir, and the, the reason and all the things that he went through and the fact that we got pushed behind by so many years, the stark fact that ISRO did not have any cryogenic papers which a one statement from either the government or ISRO when he was arrested would have completely blown the case apart. Uh, did not happen. And so when something like that happens, one starts to get involved with what is working with and for our country. And so my involvement with that biopic was more, more personal than business. But if a biopic is made for business reasons, then I think uh, you're right about how it gets colored and, and you know, it's catering to all the... Um, all the uh, commercial elements that it needs to tick and therefore the authenticity or the uh, you know or the grace of the person on which the film is being made is uh, is, is under question yeah i think from gandhi as well you know it was gandhi when it was made was was a very westerners uh, idea of what gandhi was i think uh, we needed to make it ourselves which we didn't also the fact that uh, you know we don't make enough film on the success and the greatness of our indian Technocrats, you know, that's, uh, you know, our scientists are, uh, you know, from Sundar Pichat to Satya Nadella, all these guys, you know, they deserve to be made a film on. But somehow we always watch uh, Steve Jobs or, uh, you know, Apollo 13 and think only the Americans can save the world. And uh, somehow, uh, you know, that, that whole narrative that we're second to them is so wrong. Um, and so to answer your question, sir, I will not be able to do a biopic unless I'm uh, convinced that that is my calling. Are you happy with the way this film is doing? Are you happy with the reception? Uh, oh, well, I, I would have been happier if you made 1000 crores. But, uh, <laughs> but no, we are absolutely thrilled to bits. Uh, I mean, uh, well, we released it in the rainy season. Hmm. But uh, I don't think any other film that I've ever been part of or in the near future has got a rating of 9.3 uh, on IMDb consistently over 12,000 votes or been 4.5 or, or 4.9 out of 5 or you know being rated at 96% and all the ratings it's just and we've seen the reviews and you've seen the feedback and we've seen videos of people giving standing ovation in theatres it's never happened to any film of mine and when is it releasing on OTT? I don't want to tell you that because <laughs> I want you all to go see it in the theatres which we would and I'm sure a lot of pe uh, members of our audience would also do that um, uh, we have a question from Aditya Chandra who is also one of our subscribers uh, this question is for you uh, 75 years of independence and being the largest filmmaking country why we have not been able to win Oscars is there any fault in the selection panel 
government policy or the kind of films that we are making each year? I think every actor, director or uh, you know, producer always dreams of getting an Oscar hmm. and that sort of validation and I think uh, Rahman sir has got twice of that. But I think it's, a, it's an effort in vain. Um, I really, I mean, I've been to Khan and I've been to Oscars in terms of see the films. What they expect to see out of India, hmm. if you don't give them that, then they don't, they're not interested in the film. If so I, they want I, to see the typical India with They want to see the struggles, yeah. they want to see the cows, poverty, they want to see the yeah. poverty. And, uh, and I, I thought that, you know, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to be able to feed you that. I mean, if you're going to take, uh, take a, a slumdog millionaire and use that as a, as a, a you know, <laughs> st uh, stereotype for India, that's not my India mm. at all. I mean, it does exist to a certain extent. But, but hey, that's not the only That's not, you know, okay. the Fortune 500 companies are the top CEOs are from India. Why don't you look at that aspect of... But I don't think that's a palatable situation yet for the rest of the world. And I don't want validation from them for that. All right. Uh, Nambi, sir, this question is from Praveen Swami, who is one of our senior editors at The Print. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's saying that you have suggested that you were targeted in the ISRO case because then Intelligence Bureau Officer R.B. Shrikumar harbored grievances against you. But it seems incredible that such an explosive espionage story involving so many individuals could have been fabricated just because of personal animus. Do you believe that there was a larger agenda? No, there is certainly a larger agenda. There is no question about it. But I am being wrongly quoted here about uh, R.B. Srikumar. Yes, it is true that there was a personal quarrel between we both. And it is also equally true that he was at that time the uh, deputy director of IB in Kerala. And he was part of the interrogation team and the investigation team. Now, when the questions came, uh, I happened to tell the quarrel between himself and myself. But the entire uh, uh, episode, if you, when they inquired about it, uh, it appeared that the IB was creating some kind of uh, story. Mm. So, CBI found out that these stories were fabricated by IB and Kerala police. So, they submitted separate reports about the Kerala police as well as the IB. In that, uh, they identified people and then they said that these are the people for following reasons, they have done this, etc, etc. So, that's all, that's the truth behind it. But then the question is whether, uh, whether such a thing can be fabricated by one person or some kind of a thing. Now, one person can be, I, I'm not saying that a one person can create such a story, but one person can be the starting point or he can be an adding point. In some way, people, uh, only one plus one plus one is the one which goes, right? And after this whole rigmarole, what do you think of the Indian judicial system? Uh, did it make you lose faith or did the final verdict, I mean, generally, what do you make of the whole thing? I mean, we also had a bizarre situation, uh, which uh, Sir has also, Shekhar Sir has also written about uh, back uh, in the day. Uh, that there was a single lawyer who was representing IB and the CBI who were then on two different sides of the story at that, at that point of time. Right, sir? Yes, sir. Because uh, on the, the those were the contradictions in the government. Right. So, uh, so, having been through this whole thing, what do, you, what do you make of the Indian judicial system? No, Indian judicial system have their own flaws, their own uh, lethargic way of adjoining the case, it drags as far as the case goes. But whatever said and done, finally I got uh, what is just to me and then I, uh, I got justice. So, I, I personally feel there could be some problems in, in getting justice, but by and large you get justice if you really fight the case. Uh, Nidhima Taneja, again one of our journalists has a question for you, sir. Um, we don't have many science films in India and from what little we have, the makers tone down the science to make it more relatable. However, in rocketry, the conversations seem real, much like how real scientists would talk like and how much did you, how much effort did you have to put in to learn the nuances of the world and get into the skin of the character. Also, if I may add, your science background would have definitely helped in some way, right? Yeah, well, it did. And I've uh, always had a problem and I've kind of been repulsed with toning it down for the Indian audience, so, the, so to speak. I don't think there has been a film that has been so intelligent that the Indian audience didn't Sorry. follow. Uh, on contrary, on contrary, if you look at films like Inception and Interstellar and Gravity, and they've done really, really well in India. And post-COVID, even more so. So, 
for filmmakers to believe that they are far more intelligent than the audience is, I think, is a fallacy. Secondly, this is a film on rocket science. I, you know, I know that for some people, understanding the science or the terminologies might be a little difficult, but they would have definitely got the impact. Mm. But for those who did understand, they would understand the brilliance of Nambi sir because of what he did, how he, how he came across the stability theorem and how he improved stability. And for them, it would have been inspirational and, and relevant instead of cringeworthy. And so I wouldn't want to do a film where the science in India is uh, deployed in such a manner and films that people start wondering whether we are, fly, fly, you know, whether we are dumbing it down so much that people who know about the science are not in awe of us at all. Did you watch The Rocket Boys? Uh, no, unfortunately I haven't, but I've heard great reviews about it. Did you, sir? Rocket Boys, no series? I didn't uh, watch, but I heard about it. And uh, people say sort of imaginations are there. Like scientists are uh, swimming on the river to cross the Pokhara. I mean, uh, some explosions, some all kinds of things I don't want to. I don't know. I have not seen it. But generally, by and large, do you think that the Indian audience and uh, what they expect from Bollywood films, uh, I mean, we, we are seeing more mature stories being delivered and uh, they are finding acceptability in the larger masses uh, as against the masala films that, uh, you know, you, you used to own, you used to mostly get that mm. till about a decade ago. And these kind of stories would get lost in the din. Uh, do you think we have changed uh, or uh, what has changed? <laughs> I think the awareness, the fact that we are, uh, you know, again, like I want to repeat, mm. the fact that the Indian technocrats are so popular mm. around the world, you know, we do India proud. Unfortunately, we do it proud outside India. Mm. But um, if you look at the latest uh, developments in Metaverse, or if you look at how Web 3.0 is, is being formed and the number of Indian entrepreneurs who are below 30, who are billionaires in India from small towns like Jhansi and Agra mm. and, uh, you know, Udaipur, these guys actually are setting up the Web 3.0 and, and Metaverses. And they're, uh, so they have larger fan following mm. uh, 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 amongst them than we have as act for actors. Mm. And slowly we're not able to draw in an opening even for mm. a film because we just seem to be undermining the intelligence of the, uh, of the normal Indian film goer. Right. And that has changed over a period of time. You see that it's changed their appreciation. I mean, if you look at what's happening with rocketry, mm. people are not complaining about it. The, mm. the critics might have saying that it's a little too, uh, too much of French uh, science jargon for them. Mm. But the audiences haven't, not even mm. one of them. So, yeah, it's a great clear indication that they moved on and right. it's time for us to catch up. Right. I would like to add to what Madhavan said. See, there is, uh, this is a story wherein absolutely we have not added any masalas, number one. We have not shot the film with any imaginations. Hmm. And we have not added or subtracted from the truth what it is. And particularly the technology part of it, we have not educated what is the real technology in rocket science? But certainly we have imparted to the viewer that this is a complex technology. Mm. That fellow knows mm. that this is a complex technology. Mm. But what? So in that sense, if you really look at it, this is no compromise. This is a movie wherein no compromise is made and this is true to the core. Right. Now, if this doesn't succeed, then what you are saying that sometime back that we have to go back to masalas and dance and um, stand and things like that. Uh, many questions from uh, several uh, people. Uh, so one of uh, I will round them off in one, uh, and I'll pick it up from Narayanan Subramaniam, our subscriber, who says, uh, "How much support did you get from the premier scientific and academic community in India and across the globe, who were aware, are well aware of your integrity and technical excellence? Were there disappointments?" And does the award of Panbhushan now uh, give you vindication and some feeling of satisfaction? No, whether I deserve a Padma Bhushan or not is to be understood by you, people like you. Maybe you may like to see the movie and then you decide, yes, you deserve it or you don't deserve it. Any decision of you, I accept it. There is no going no, back. I think what he meant by uh, it was that did it feel like vindication after such a long battle? Uh, no, he was asking something earlier because okay. no, no, no. whether he whether. So the question is that during these times of trouble, how much support did you get from the scientific community and ISRO, etc.? Because they knew your integrity and they also knew uh, your technical ability. Yeah, actually, I got nil support from the 
uh, ISRO community, for that matter, from anybody. All the press was against me, the society was against me, the government was against me, both the central government and the state government, excepting very few people. One, you happen to be Shekhar Gupta, you yourself. Another is T. N. Gopakumar, who wrote in the uh, Kannadi in the Asia Net. And then K. M. Rai, who wrote in Mangalam. And, uh, you know, these are the kind of people who were uh, sort of, I forgot the name of the another guy who was a DRDO scientist. He wrote between you and me in Hindu paper, he wrote this is an absolute fake uh, fabricated story. And I remember the date, he said that on January 13, 1995, before I came out of jail, See, that is the kind of vision he had. He said that this is a fabricated source. Excepting these three, four, five people, singular points, none of them supported me. In fact, I not only didn't get the support, but honestly, I didn't want anybody's support. Why? Because I didn't do any crime. Now, if I have done some crime, then I will need the support, one, two, three, mass support and all. But after I got some clarity in the whole case, for example, ISRO, Big uh, open letter came after uh, two years, uh, two and a half years, from Professor Davan and Professor Rao and then Professor uh, Mr. T. N. Session, Professor Chandra and uh, Yashpal and uh, Rodam Narasimha. Now, these are the people who wrote a open letter wherein they categorically made it clear that Nambi Narayanan is innocent and he has not done any crime. But honestly, by the time the support came, by the time the support should have come much earlier, it doesn't make any sense. It, it is a matter of, okay, oh, oh I see, that, very nice. <clears throat> so that, that is the kind of situation I was driven to. But uh, later, okay, it went on. So to answer your question, I didn't get any support from anyone in the beginning. Afterwards, the support came. That was uh, whatever weightage you want to give to that, you can give it. Yeah, there would have been, uh, I mean, uh, following this non-scandal, uh, I'm sure even, you know, generally India's uh, space research program, uh, its intelligence, internal intelligence gathering, etc., all of it took a perception hit in some ways. Uh, how was it in the aftermath uh, of uh, uh, the supposed controversy? No, I, I want to correct myself. See, though the support came little later, it came from the top stalwarts. They were ex-chairman ISRO, for example, and University Grants Commission chairman, and then NIA's chairman, and ex-election commissioner, etc. So, certainly it mattered. I, I, I should not say that it doesn't, it, it mattered. But the only regret I have is that it didn't come in the, you know, earlier than right. what it happened. But it would have really yeah, but then what they gave me an answer is they were wonderstruck. They were uh, struck by Surprise, yeah. So they, they did not know what the hell is going on. So they, they came back in the late. Now the demoralization, I think I mentioned this earlier, it demoralized the people. Actually, if you think that there is some kind of internal uh, intelligence uh, inside this row and then that kind of a thing. No, no, inter internal intelligence as in uh, your RIB or CBI prosecuting agency. So basically my question was, all this would have also dealt a blow to the perception, global perception of India's uh, space research program. I am coming, I'm coming yeah. to that. You see, IB is one agency who was part of this uh, interrogation. Right. They say that I have sold a technology which is non-existent. What do you think of them? You think their internal intelligence ability is great? Tell me. No, of course not. So, this is the state of affairs. So, don't give any undue importance to these people. They, they don't know anything, according to me. If they know something, they would not have done this. They, it, would have known, it would have been known to them in no time that this is something which is unbelievable. For example, why the hell a man should... See, the, you, you take this case. Viking uh, Vikas Engine. We took 19 years after 125 man years spent in France, supported by 2000 engineers, internal, external, and 100 and odd industries supporting us, we could make a Viking engine. Now, this Viking engine is made into a document that is put into a fish bucket 
and then sold it to two uneducated women for onward transmission to Pakistan. What kind of story is this? So this is what they did. The point I am making is they didn't understand anything out of it. They had only one goal. They just wanted to fabricate it. They fabricated it. Uh, Madhavan, uh, I presume you spent some time with uh, Nabi Sar's family also while researching this. What was your sense of them? <clears throat> um, like I've said in the film, I found that uh, I found to be a very dignified family. You know. Um, <clears throat> my whole um, intuition was, you know, was uh, uh, telling me that I was missing the larger picture when I met him, his family, his daughter. I didn't get a chance to meet uh, his wife, but all of them had been through a trauma. But there was a silent dignity that they that they maintain, something that I've tried very hard to bring out in the film. Uh, and also, you know, the fact that this was not the sign of somebody who could have taken eight lakh dollars as as uh, as. Uh, money for uh, selling Indian rocketry secrets to Pakistan. This is not the kind of family that would have done that, even if they had the chance and somebody assured them that nobody would ever find out. It wasn't that sort of a family. So the, for the fact that, you know, they were trying to bring a program down and Nambi sir and his family got caught in the crossfire uh, was, was something that was evident to me. But more importantly, why Nambi Narayan? You know, if you had to bring down a department, you could have done with anything. But the crucial point here was, Guptaji, which I'm sure you understand because uh, at a time that when you reported the innocence of Nambi Narayan, sir, you were also a young man and prone to so many threats and so many uh, disagreements from people. You, in fact, you had case, cases against you for saying something like this. You can imagine the fear of other scientists, you know, who would have been, then gone against the entire Kerala police, against the government, against everything that was ruling by supporting Nambi Narayan, sir. I could, I could understand that fear. But the fact is, the, the facts were so blatantly, like it's one statement, India did not have a cryogenic program. There is nothing about the, uh, the program that can be sold. It's a simple statement. They didn't have to take Nambi Sar's side or anybody's side. All they had to say was, there is no cryogenic program. There is no secret that can be sold. But they didn't do that. And so for me to understand that family and what they went through and the silent dignity and the fact that Nambi sir's wife is still traumatized by the event, the fact that their family is unable to see the film even now, uh, uh, sir, is, is testimony enough for me that, you know, they've been through trauma that, you know, is so unfair and so, so cruel. So was there a moment uh, that inspired you to do this film? Was that some epiphany or some mo moment, something happened? That yes, yes actually, actually, in fact, this moment happened and I, while it was happening, I was making the note of it saying that I will say it in the interviews after the film is being made and released. There was an interview that Nambi sir did in 1990, uh, I think 2014 was it? 2014 or 15 uh, with a gentleman called Prajesh who was the, uh, you know, who worked in the film with us. In that, in that interview, Nambi sir was speaking in Malayalam and he was saying, you know, this case has been dragging on and on and on and Nambi Narayan will die. But I promise you that even after Nambi Narayan dies, this case will not get over till justice is served because I will make sure that will happen. And at that point of time, Nambi sir had tears in his eyes and he was quivering, you know, and I looked at that one particular shot and I said, this is, I have to do this film. I don't care. I have to tell this story. That was the moment that I just stood up and I clapped and so impressed I was with that particular clip that that features very importantly in my film as well. Uh, two last questions before we wrap up. One, uh, do you see yourself directing more films than acting uh, in more? Uh, what's next on the cards? That's the first one. And I'll ask the second one later if we are, after we are done. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to be directing anything right now. I'm, uh, I'm an actor. I love being an actor. This is a passion project and uh, Nambi sir doesn't agree with me at all. He thinks I should keep <laughs> continuing to direct three films a year. But I'm uh, I'm looking at a quick turnaround right now. I've, uh, I want to do as many roles as I can while I can do it. All right. And uh, second question for uh, lay people like me, and I'm assuming a lot of people in the audience. How cool is it to be next to a rocket launcher? Can you believe it? it's a privilege? You know, I'm once when I met Nambi sir, I, I I knew he was a rocket scientist. That itself was exciting enough. Right. For me. I mean, everybody starts off saying, "I want to be an astronaut when I yeah, grow up." Yeah. Yeah. And here you're talking to people who are making things that were going into outer space. Right. And for me, that was a thrilling moment. But that thrill got compounded many times over when I realized this man built 
a rocket engine you know he was the father of a rocket engine and that was uh, for me it was uh, it was like spending it was like a novice getting time to spend with bill gates when he's trying to get into coding that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, experience that i had all right and we'll end on that note thank you so much for joining us uh, thank you so much shekhar sir for uh, coming from delhi uh, and thanks a lot to our audience for watching uh, this is mansi padke senior associate editor with me was uh, madhavan and nambi sir and uh, my editor in chief shekhar gupta thank you thank, thank you sir thank you sir. thank you sir thank you sir thank you, sir. Thank you madhavan for doing this and nambi sir thank you for being there yeah thank you <laughs> you, you you made indians keep the faith in our system and judiciary and justice Thank you. Thank you so much, Ekandi. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you. The print of the cuff presented by IIFL Wealth and Asset Management, corporate partner AU Small Finance Bank, in alliance with Jindal Steel and Power Limited, airline partner SpiceJet. Oh.